Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Is everyone staying cool? See, I'm envisioning I'm on an iceberg right now. It's all mental. My name is Flora Pastorero. I'm from Pittsburgh. I, I encourage audience participation. I'm from Pittsburgh. Yes, thank you. I am the proud daughter of Italian immigrants. And I'm happy to tell you, and proud to tell you, I come from very humble beginnings. We didn't have much growing up, but we had two things that you have in every Italian household. We had a lot of love, and we had a lot of food. Because to Italians, food is love. So I would come in the house, and my mother would say to me, did you eat? And I said, yeah, ma. Because in Pittsburgh, you don't call your mother, mother. You don't say mom, you call them ma. Yeah, ma, I ate. Okay, I make you something to eat. Mom, I just ate. You gotta eat. That's the way they showed love. And I had a lot of love in my house and a lot of support. And from the time I was very, very little, I knew I wanted to be a television news broadcaster. I don't know why, it's just what I wanted to do. And I knew I wanted to do it. I was intrigued by it. I liked the idea that something new was happening every day, and I was going to pursue my dreams. It's a hard business. It's a very competitive business, and you have to have nerves of steel to succeed because you will encounter obstacles along the way. And the first obstacle came when I was in college. And one of the women from the television stations came from Pittsburgh, came to my college, California University of Pennsylvania. Yeah. And she talked about the industry. And after she gave her speech, I said to her, I want to get into the news business. I want to be an anchor. And she looked at me and she said, you don't have the look. You don't have the voice. Have you thought about doing something else? I said, no. This is my dream. And then I went back to my dorm room and I cried. The next obstacle came when I took an internship at a Pittsburgh television station. And one of the men at the station said to me, you want to succeed in this business? You need to lose 10 pounds off your backside. I said, what? He said, you need to lose 10 pounds off your backside. I went home, I cried, and I ate a donut. I didn't lose 10 pounds off my backside because I was going to do this my way, and I did it. I took a job, my very first job in Clarksburg, West Virginia. I was the weekend anchor. And then I took a job in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, where I was an anchor and a reporter. I moved on to Wilkes-Barre, there you go for Wilkes-Barre. And by the time I was 27, I did it. I achieved what I wanted to achieve. I got a job in the fourth largest market in the country, right here in Philadelphia. I did it. ABC 6 WPVI Action News. Along the way, people told me, you're not going to make it. You can't do it. You're in the wrong profession. You're never going to get anywhere. I had people who told me to change my last name, Pastorero. It sounded too ethnic. I didn't do any of it. I stayed true to myself, and I persevered. So I worked at Action News for a number of years, and I loved it. Long days, long nights, weekends, holidays. And then I got to a point where I wanted to start a family. So I took a professional demotion for a personal promotion. I stepped down from Philadelphia, and I took a job at a television station in Harrisburg. I was the noon and 5 o'clock anchor. I was married. We built a house. I had a good job. I had a baby. Life was good. What could go wrong? Nothing. Well, my marriage fell apart. I was heartbroken. I was crushed. 
and I was paralyzed. I was mourning the death of my marriage. And I think a lot of you here are probably divorced and know what I mean when I say that I was in mourning. I was in bed, couldn't get up. After about three days, my dad came into the room and he said, you're not the first person to get divorced. You're not gonna be the last person to get divorced. Now get up, get out of bed, because your son needs you. He was only two years old. He was right. I got up and I moved on. And here I am 17 years later, I'm still a single parent, and I'm happy to tell you that my son is happy, he's healthy, a very respectful young man who just started his sophomore year in college. He's my pride and he's my joy. I did it. I got this. Single parent, my son's okay, the job's going great. What could go wrong? Well, things went wrong. January 2017, our station was sold. We got a new owner. We got a new male boss. And everything changed. I started to speak up. You can imagine what happened next. March 12th of this year, I was fired. with this company for 20 years, and I was fired. A loyal employee for 20 years, and I was fired. I was devastated, I was heartbroken, and I went into mourning. It was the death of my career. I was paralyzed. I sat in bed for days. My father passed away five years ago, and I heard him say to me, Flora, you're not the first person to get fired from a job. You're not going to be the last person to get fired from a job. So get up, get moving, and do something about it. And so I did. The first thing I did was to file a complaint against my employer with the Pennsylvania Human Relations Commission. While I cannot get into details of this case for legal reasons, if you really want to know what happened, just Google my last name. You'll read all about it. Newspapers in Philadelphia, Harrisburg, and Pittsburgh did stories. I can't get into details, but I can tell you one thing. I'm not just fighting this fight for me. I'm fighting this fight for all of the women out there who live in fear. I'm fighting this fight for the women who are afraid to speak up. And I'm fighting this fight for the women who are afraid to speak up because they fear retaliation. I will not give up this fight for me and for all of you. So I filed the complaint, and then I had to do something I never did before. I had to file for unemployment. Unemployment? I've been working since I was 14. Figured it out. Then I had to get health insurance. Figured it out. And now, here came the big, the biggie. I had to get a job. This was a daunting task because I've only had two jobs my entire life. I worked in my uncle's pizza shop and then I got into broadcasting. I didn't know how to do anything else. But I decided 
that I was going to sell myself and convince somebody to hire me because they needed me. So I made a list of everybody I knew and everybody I wanted to know. I got this. This will be a piece of cake. First phone call. Hi, I'm Flora Pastorero. I'd like to work for you. And the gentleman said, well, send me your resume. A resume? <laughs> I didn't have a resume. I hadn't sent out a resume in 25 years. I was working. I was happy. I thought I was going to retire from that job. Figured it out. The next person, are you on LinkedIn? What's LinkedIn? Figured it out. Got on LinkedIn. Over the next two months, I called everyone I knew. I emailed people. I met them for lunch. I met them for dinner. I met them for breakfast, and I met them for coffee. And I sold myself and convinced them, you need me. After two months, I am grateful to tell you that the Bravo Group in Harrisburg, the largest PR firm in the state, hired me. They brought me on as a media relations consultant. I want to publicly thank Megan Madsen and Chris Bravikos for giving me this opportunity, for believing in me and treating me with respect and dignity. It was amazing. I also am working for a website. It's called penwatch.org. I post content to the website. I also do media training. So if any of you need help with a speech coming up, a presentation, or you want to get ready to be prepared in case the media interviews you, call me. I can help you. I'm also producing videos for PenWatch for businesses, for clients, for nonprofits. The clients get the videos, and we also post them on PenWatch. I figured it out. I figured it out because you have to. You're going to face obstacles in your life. You're going to have face challenges. But you have to figure it out. So I just basically gave you a wrap of my life for the last 10 minutes. And this is what I want you to take away from this. Believe in yourself. Know your worth and know your value. And here's the biggie. Don't live in fear. Do not live in fear. Fear will cripple you. Fear will prevent you from achieving your potential. And when you are fearless, you are free to do whatever you want to do and to achieve whatever you want to achieve so you can transform, transcend, and rise. I thank you very much for your time and for your attention. It's been a pleasure and an honor to be here today. Thank you so much. Thank you.